Hello and welcome back to Blender CC Live Nodding. In this episode, I want to try to show you uh, how to transfer color from points into surface. So I get snippet from Hixas. Uh, this is the more complicated way. There's an actually simpler one, but I'm not going to show you the node setup yet. I will instead build it from scratch. So let's get started. So I'm using Blender 4.0. And in the old days, if we want to the easiest way to transfer color from other objects is to use something like a dynamic paint. Uh, but now nowadays we can actually use geometry nodes. So let's get started. So this guy is a cube. I will subdivide it first using subdivision surface. So we have more points. And I will scatter some points inside. So Shift A, distribute points in volume gonna complain because it's not a volume we're gonna turn mesh into the volume first so we can have a bunch of points so the idea is from this subdivided surface we want to transfer some point so point transfer and in the old days also we have something like attribute transfer but nowadays we actually ne need to use a uh, nearest index or sampling we need to use sample basically sample sample index and sample nearest so there's a lot of sample nearest surface index curve this is actually something that fundamental need to be explained with a couple of videos Anyway, we have a bunch of objects here. Uh, we, we have subdivided surface. We have, we already have these points. Um, we can create, we can have random value vector. And, and then we want to store the attribute as well, but let's do this one by one. So sample the nearest points and this one should be color. This could be color or vector, basically three. Uh, RGB or XYZ data. Let's keep it vector. Let's uh, sample geometry index. This goes to the index. We are sampling the nearest objects from from the points. And and then we want to sample the index color. And this one goes into store name attributes. So this is the way to do it. Oh, okay. We are actually we actually need to sample the points. It's nothing to do with the geometry, but the geometry we're gonna store the value for the geometry. Okay, and then set material apply the original the default materials and the value goes in this is going to be color data and save this as call okay let's call it call me uh yeah okay we should have something uh actually if we if we set this to cycles And with the material shader, we also need to use the attributes and pass in call me attributes, pass it into the base color. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, cool. We have, we have something. Let's increase the density. Seed. Subdivide sample nearest points. Other points needs to be coming from this guy as well. Okay, now it's looking more correct. Let's 
So this kind of logical, right? It, it makes sense. So the color transfer, we store the color as call me attribute. Uh, we, we sample the nearest points. We didn't specify sample position, or maybe I should put sample position. Oh no. Okay, we don't need to. Uh, we can use random or grid. Now I'm, I'm wondering if Higsas actually give the same not setup geometry pass in the geometry and store name attributes that's what we did and then as to volume distribute points as to volume distribute points in volume Sample the nearest. Let's see if we use vector, is it going to be? Hmm. More or less the same color point vector point blur okay blur attributes that's the one I didn't use we can of course blur the attributes yes vector color we can specify color here so blur so we can blur the color okay okay with with more subdivisions we can see we can see a little bit better so that's good smooth that's shade smooth Okay, so it it's getting there. It's just a simple simple example. Of course, okay, this is a blur. So now we have the setup. It's a little bit first time you use it might be feeling a bit complicated, but now we have a way to sample sample the nearest points that we distributed. In the 3D space, and then we sample the index, make a random color. We can blur the attributes, so that's all fine and dandy. I think in the next next video, I might need to show you a different, also a different example, where we can transfer like maybe use simulation or like a repeat zone. And then make it so that we can transfer the color just like a like a dynamic paint so the, the the color hopefully can kind of blend more so it's not static like this i mean at the moment we can actually blur it so it's kind of blending and diffusing it's almost it's almost like a dynamic paint um, but i think we can do a little bit more here I have an example. Where I colorize and then, you know, animate it a little bit. Oh. Let's reload very quickly.
Okay. Yep. Similar example. But instead of, in this case, instead of just random value for the max, I'm using mass grave and I use emissions. So we have this cool animations. Just mass grave texture on top of the random value because we don't want to be too random. Maybe we can even do this. Add math. This goes into the minimum. Wow. I'm using cycles. I actually this is EV. EV with bloom. With bloom. So wow, that's quite strong. just slightly experimental I think we need to we can we can normalize the value of the color but I think this is kind of neat so that's uh, apply on Suzanne we can also use donuts just copy link copy modifier there you go just random points transferring the color on the fly uh, it's not diffusing like dynamic paint at the moment it's just like the points itself the points itself is static but the random value is animating so there's something something going on there with the with the value but the point itself it's static uh, we might actually with sample index blur Sample position. Sample position can be animated as well, or we can we can actually animate the distribution of the volume, the position of the point set position. So we can randomize this position as well. Maybe using noise. Yeah, that seems to work as well. If we if we disconnect all of this, so we have super bright color. Well, why is this so bright? Anyway. Let's keep it simple for now. So we haven't used repeat zone yet, but I think there's another setup here. Example from Hixas that I haven't tried. This one is involving a group. This one is using repeat zone and I don't know what it does, but I think the color seems to be blending a little bit better instead of just using blur. Similar, similar to blur. Yeah, but it's uh, all these tools to create like a pattern inside geometry nodes. We can probably do the same thing using just material shader. But uh, yeah, I like to do it using geometry nodes, I guess. And we have simulation zone and repeat zone that we haven't tried yet. Maybe that's for the next video. So hopefully you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.